So for the first time, we are hearing how then First Lady Melania Trump responded at first to the January 6th insurrection on Capitol Hill. Joining us now, CNN White House correspondent Kate Bennett and CNN anchor and chief national affairs analyst Casey Hunt. Kate, take it away. What have we learned? <laughs> well, I mean, I think the thing here, John, is that we we are hearing from the first lady, which is something we never really do anyway, um, the former first lady. And it was her idea to do a photo shoot of a carpet inside the White House on the day <laughs> of the insurrection. It's not funny. I shouldn't laugh. But, you know, Stephanie Grisham at the time tried to say, as her communications director, as her chief of staff, tried to say, hey, shouldn't you be saying something? Shouldn't you be condemning what's happening on Capitol Hill? And the stunning response was a simple no. This is not something I'm going to do. This is not a choice I'm going to make. Um, this is something that doesn't concern me right now. And she continued on with her photo shoot. And I think what we're seeing is a first lady, a former first lady who was very apathetic to the role. She all but disappeared towards the end of her tenure. She was rarely heard from. She was rarely seen. She was packing up. She was wrapping up. Meanwhile, the country's in turmoil. There's questions about the election coming from her husband. Um, and this was really her feeling. And the one word answer of no is so um, sort of standard Melania, very a woman of very few words, and most importantly, very few words when words are needed the most. You've also reported that she doesn't really have an interest in campaigning again or being first lady again. And yet also we're finding out some new information about where she is on whether Donald Trump actually won the election or not, right? Yeah, and this is surprising. It's just if he didn't, but just, yeah, this, just what does she yeah. think? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, and this is interesting always to me when people say, well, she wants to escape and she's, you know, tapping SOS on the White House windows and she's trapped. She's not. And she's not trapped in her marriage. And they're not... Um, to strangers really in the night. She is more aligned with him philosophically, ideology, with her ideology than most people think. Um, and so when she does say something that is um, politically, you know, on par with her husband, people go, oh, that's, that's odd, but it's not really. They've been together for more than 20 years. She's watched him have this political aspiration and will watch him again from a distance have it next time if he does. But it's not unusual. She she is aligned with him politically. Well, I mean, and it's clear, too, that she knows the power of sending a message. I mean, she used her clothes to send messages. I mean, we all saw that. And the idea that there isn't a role for her, because, you know, I, I want to underscore what, and I know you've, you've confirmed this reporting in Stephanie Grisham's new book, is she wasn't necessarily asking her to tweet, oh, my, you know, my husband didn't win the election, stand down. They were right, trying to get her to say, Everyone has a right to protest, but no one has a right to be violent. Right. It was not a political statement. It was just stand down, don't be violent. Yeah. And, you know, I, I spoke to one of the, the cops uh, who was on the front during the insurrection. And the reason that they wanted people to do things like this inside the White House was because these insurrectionists were only listening to the right. Trumps. Mm -hmm. The cop, you know, on the front said, look, man, like, I've been a Republican my whole life. I'm a cop. You have to stop. And the insurrectionist said back to him, I'm only going to do what Trump says. Right. Trump has to say it. So that's why this is such, so critical in, in context here. And it's such a good point because at times during Trump's presidency, she would sometimes say the opposite. And that always made news. She would say thoughts and prayers when he would forget. She would say, you know, don't do this or do that or have her own you know, independent thinking. And, and so it wouldn't have been a heavy lift for her to do. She certainly was not... Um, you know, beholden to the West Wing in terms of messaging. They rarely checked in with each other, the East and West Wing, on what she did or what she said. Most of those texts from Stephanie Grisham, I should remind people, um, I mean, from the First Lady via Stephanie Grisham, but but it's not unusual. I mean, she could have said something. She's, again, the ask her mind. was denounce violence. Right. Listen, and that was the... Say something political. That was the tipping point for Grisham to resign. And she was the first person in, in the Trump administration, in the White House, of significant stature to submit her resignation that day. On, on the 6th. I mean, and Brianna, we were talking about this earlier, too. I mean, it, there were so many people in the end who did step down because of what happened on January 6th. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, we've swung entirely in the other direction, and it's suddenly unacceptable for so many Republicans to denounce what happened that day. I mean, it's just, it's yeah. absolutely mind-boggling. Look, si silence is acquiescence. This was a choice that Melania Trump made. It was a choice 
to, to engage or, or support, I suppose, the big lie. And it's also not out of place, right? I mean, this is someone who, despite, I think, sort of the hagiography that exists with a first lady, I mean, she, she dabbled in birtherism, too, uh, beforehand. So this is, this is, you know, she needs to be held to account for her, the choices that she makes.